Welcome to the example. We're back at it. This time, we're on the campus of Auburn University, where we discuss Christian stereotypes with students. So, the first question. So, what do you think about Christian faith? Like, just in general? In general. It's so broad. Like, um, it's very broad. Like, my opinions on it, like, how, my stance, like... Um, just what do you think about it in general? I mean, I, I mean, I like it. I'm a Christian, so... I mean, I don't know what else to say. Okay. Yeah, I like it, too. I'm a Christian. Um... I was raised with it. My granddad was the pastor of our church. My dad's a deacon. My mom's an orphan. So I was in the church. But I also feel like there is a transition between being brought up in the church and then actually believing in the faith. So you have to have like a time in your life where I guess you're kind of down. And it's kind of like the metaphor of like your parents can take you to the water, but until you drink it, you can't really understand the Christian, the Christian faith. So like I did that a few years ago. And now I'm like really in the Christian faith. So like I really like that. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I'm a Christian as well. I, I really love the lessons that you get from it. It's, I mean, I love my grades, just stuff going on with family. I just bless it all the time. I, I never really worry about anything because I know that God's going to bless me in some way, somehow. All right. Turn. <laughs> I'm also a Christian, and I like it as well, but to piggyback on what he said, um, I also grew up in the church, but the original church that I went to, we actually didn't learn much of the Christian faith. Like, we, we just praised God, and he would, our preacher would kind of preach the same thing every Sunday. So I went because my parents made me, but I didn't really enjoy it, and eventually we stopped going to the church. But then I went, started going to the church that she goes to them, and they actually teach all the different stories and just miracles that happen. And that's when I really felt connected and felt like I wanted to make my own relationship. So I appreciate true teaching and Christianity. That's what I enjoy. Okay. All right. That's good answers. Um, and any answer is a good answer. We're not here to tell you what it's a good answer. All right. Um, what impact do you think Christian Christianity has on the local culture? What impact do you think Christianity has on local culture? I think it has a big impact because, like, in Alabama, you know, the traditional South, a lot of people are raised in that Christian upbringing. So a lot of the, like, laws and things that we see are, like, you know, cultural concepts that, you know, we see on this university are, is because of the faith, like, you know. Um... I mean, this university is pretty morally sound, and I think it's due to that biblical basis that many people are, have here, so. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with what you said. Like, everything she said was right. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Can you the question? Oh, yeah. Gotcha. So it says, uh, what impact do you think Christians have on the local community? Um, I, well, like, as far as, like, the South and the we they call, like, the Bible Belt. So as far as, like, hospitality and like, greeting somebody, bringing them into your house, or just doing stuff for somebody, that Christianity has a big effect on, on what you do when somebody comes into your house, your hospitality and all that stuff. I think it just adds a lot of positive, positivity uh, if you do what you're supposed to do or do what you're taught in the teaching. You know, you're supposed to greet people, uplift people, things of that nature. You're just supposed to feel happy and safe around Christians. Uh, okay. Huh? All right. Um, name some Christian stereotypes. Uh, <laughs> um, you're square. You're so conservative. Like you don't. You're closed-minded. Like just because. Oh, you may not accept everything that you do. So your opinion doesn't matter because it's not the popular opinion. Uh, I guess those are some of the major ones that I can think of. Yeah, closed-minded, judgmental. Yeah, judgmental. Sometimes maybe awkward now with like other people. Maybe you don't um, agree with some what other people think, or um, people think that you're very close-minded, or don't want to conform to anything, or just like really steadfast in what you believe in. Okay. Um. Yeah, I go, agree with them with the judgmental. The um, I mean, we just throw the Bible in everybody's faces when we're trying to tell somebody about it. Which, um, is it really that true? 
That's about it. <laughs> Hypocritical. Don't like to have fun. Really fun. Um, fake. Fake. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So now I'm, we're gonna bring this a little bit closer to home. What are some stereotypes that you personally experienced? And maybe someone was like that to you. So like basically all the ones that I said, like I've been called lame before. Um, I guess nerdy because of like I don't want to necessarily go do all the things that a lot of other people may think is okay. Judgmental and hypocritical at times, but I mean nobody's perfect, so. Okay. You care to give one example? Um, like, okay, so at my high school, it was a guy that was in my class, he was gay, and of course, you know, I didn't agree with it, so I would, you know, I wasn't necessarily ugly to him or anything, like I treated him the same way I would treat anybody else, but at times, he would sometimes be like, yeah, you're judging me for what I did, or something like that, and I would be like, no, but of course, you know, you can only do so much, you can't change people's perceptions for them, so. Okay, thank you. Yeah, piggyback on the same thing. Um, I've been called judgmental. Um, um, close minded, but like in the past, I say like in the past two years, I've become a lot more open minded, especially with the um, sexual situation and everything. I've just become more open minded that like you need to just accept them. Like each kids can't really. Um, you don't have to agree with their lifestyle, but you can't really treat them any other type of way than how you treat anyone else. Like, there's no, like, you can't really, you, yeah, you don't have to agree with them, but you can still hang out with them, you can still have fun with them, you can still talk to them, you can still have them be your friend. But it's just that you just don't agree with the lifestyle, and that's just it. You just don't agree with it. And I don't, I don't think that's judgmental, I just think that, hey, I'm not treating you any type of, any differently or any um different from my friends. It's just that I just don't agree with you, with what you're doing. Okay. Can I have a follow up question about that? How did you feel when you were called judgment? How did it make you feel personally? It made me feel bad. It made me have like to reflect on what I was doing and what I was saying and it kinda made me insecure because I was like I don't feel like I'm being judgmental, like I'm not, you know, literally like God judging you, you know, it's just that it's what I believe in, but it's just that I'm not treating you in any different kind of way, it's just that I just don't agree with the lifestyle, that's okay. it. Thank you very much. For me, I've never been personally called any of the um, stereotypes, but I just, from my perspective and seeing everything high school and everything, I just didn't fit in with everybody in high school. And then when I came to college, I found more people that were like me, that were like nerdy, like Christian, still knew how to have fun and all that kind of stuff. So, I, uh, as far as the stereotype, I just I didn't fit in with everybody. Okay. Right, your turn, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still into her in that I didn't really get called much, but I've had to deal with a lot of people and being the hypocriticalness and kind of the exclusiveness. Like before I said that I had moved to other churches, right. well, as a new person, they actually would judge me. And at first, you know, they're all friendly and all that stuff. Well, I say they, but yeah, me too. But they're friendly, but then as you get closer, they're kind of like, you haven't been at the church long enough, or we don't know you like that, and things of that nature. So, I mean, there's some truth to some of the stereotypes, I think, but there's also a good one to Okay. All right, last question. All right, I'm gonna let y'all go. Um, what are some things you think Christians can do to reverse some of the stereotypes that you have encountered? Um, I think the best thing we can do is like, you know, one of the greatest commandments is to love. So if we just treat everybody with the same love and kindness, like, and try to at least equally do it, I think that would help with a lot of stereotypes. And when we, like, approach situations that don't ne necessarily agree with what we believe, not to do it in anger, but with an open mind, and not even trying, you don't have to accept what they do because you don't agree with it, but at least have a kindness to, like, you know, say, hey, I don't agree, and leave it at that, not try to fight it or argue with it. So. Yeah, I think that we just have to set the example of love and just try to love everyone and love the world. Just don't be judgmental. Like the stereotypes are like, don't have that stereotypical type of mindset. It's like the same thing with African Americans. People think that African Americans are just, what they see on the news and thugs and they're just like ignorant and then 
you see the riots and everything. It's like, we all don't act like that. You know, that was like an emotional moment, and they just thought that was the right thing to do, but not every African American is like that. Not every African American is the same. Or, or, not every African American are the same. So, I think we just have to all set the example, try to just stop these ter- stereotypes, and just love it. What do you think we can do to reverse some of these Christian stereotypes? Um, for me personally, I, um, I'm not good at you know, necessarily witnessing to somebody, like just saying, oh, this is having the moment and just speaking about God. But the way I witness, the way I've, I've just watched myself, I do it in, by my actions, by the things that I say, how I act around people. And um, my mom told me, like, God, this happened when I was like really young, like six years old. She said, I was at the hair salon and I was just talking about the stuff that I was doing in the church and something like that. And um, then uh, one of the ladies there was at the hair salon, she got saved. And I, I didn't know that until like just maybe a few months ago. And, so, and then a lot of people like that I work with, they're just so enthused with like my personality. Like when they talk to me, they just they they really like a work ethic and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, just by your actions, you gotta act like you you gotta have to act like Christ. I think it's about being more open. I mean, people stereotype us as being kind of elitist, and even though we are the chosen, we have to understand that we are human, and we have to come across as human for people to actually believe in what we're trying to say and for people to relate to us, because if they don't relate, then they don't care what you say, because they don't think they can achieve where, they, where you are. So. Okay. Thank y'all very much for your participation. Um, the YouTube channel that we're making is called The Example, by the way. And so uh, we hope that y'all will be a part of that example. And in that, I do want to encourage y'all. Okay, y'all all going to the school? Yes. Okay, all right. So any of y'all involved in any campus organization, any Christian organization? I'm not necessarily Christian, but I'm in campus All right, so I want to encourage you to get involved with one of the Christian no, campus organizations. Which one? Um, I go to uh, Empower. Okay. On Tuesday nights, it's Bible study through, okay. uh, through the church that we go through, go to White Street. Okay. So on Tuesday nights, they come on campus and they have a, uh, a Bible study for everybody. And they'll bring food as well. So okay. Have that. Well, I just want to encourage y'all to be involved, be one of the examples. Um, share with your friends, even if it's just, you don't have to be in an awkward moment, just being friends. You have plenty of opportunities to share. But, um, you know, just make that a, a part of your college experience, you know, sharing your faith in whatever way, you know, is acceptable for you, you know. Doing that is really important.